What's going on everybody? My name is Matt and I'm going to show you how to block ads on your network devices such as your phone, laptop, or even a smart TV by setting up a private recursive DNS server using a service known as Pi-hole. Uh, if you'd like to install this on a Raspberry Pi on your home network, the process is just about entirely the same. If I don't have a ra spare Raspberry Pi lying around, I'm going to do this uh, by deploying this in the cloud using Linode as my virtual private server provider of choice. And if you're new to Linode and you're following along, be sure to go check out the Level 1 Tech's YouTube channel. Uh, their content's great, and they also have a discount code to get $100 of credits to be used during your first month. So go deploy your game servers, go deploy your projects, and kind of burn up that $100 credits that you get for free. So now let's talk about what a DNS server is, and then I'll explain what a recursive DNS server is. So first, Pi-hole is, is a DNS server that is that has whitelists and blacklists, and by comparing the requested domains against those lists, it can block content from being delivered to you. The internet and your web browser kind of work together to serve you content by using the, the Transport Control Protocol Internet Protocol Stack, otherwise known as TCP IP, or just IP for short. Each web server, or other types of servers, all have these unique IP addresses. And instead of learning and memorizing strings of numbers to get to, to, get to websites, uh, we use domain to name servers to translate an IP to a domain or a domain to an IP. So we can, we can think of an IP address as a, as a street address. Now, in the DNS resolution path, there are four servers in the typical DNS resolution path. The recursor, uh, this is... Think of this as uh, Cloudflare says to think of it as the librarian. This is the server that does the looking up for you. Then there's the root name server. This is like the index of the library. This points to the general location of the interwebs, the, ser the, the content you're looking for is at. And that points you to the top level domain name server. Uh, think of this as the index, the end of the bookshelf that you're looking for. This is specifically the .com, .net, .org, .gov, .us portion of the address and it will help you identify the final server which is the authoritative name server think of this as like the index of the book you're looking for it can tell you on what page the content you're looking for is on if it's available and it will return this ip address to the recursor who will then provide that final ip address from the authoritative name server to the client so by installing Unbound, we'll be configuring our, a recursive DNS server, which is the first stop in our DNS lookups. So instead of your recursor being Google at 8.8.8.8, or even Comcast at 75.75.75.75, it'll go to your Pi-hole server instead, which will make your web browsing just a little bit more private. So altogether today, we're going to be installing Apache for our web server, Pi-hole, or our DNS server. We're going to secure our, our Apache web server and Pi-hole web interface using a Let's Encrypt certificate, uh, with an, which is going to be via SSL or secure socket layer. And then we're going to be using Unbound for our DNS recursive lookups. We're going to use PyVPN for remote connectivity to this, this endpoint. And finally, we're going to be securing our virtual machine using UFW or Universal Firewall to protect ourselves from being uh, attacked on the internet. So let's get to it. All right, so we've popped into our Linode dashboard. We've hit create a new Linode. I am going to go ahead and grab a Ubuntu 20.04 LTS for long-term support. I am going to choose the Atlanta, Georgia data center. I'm going to do a shared CPU, one gigabyte Linode, because that'll only take me, um, uh, only cost me $5 a month, and to play with for a couple hours, it barely cost me a thing. I'm going to go ahead and label this, this Linode, just to keep track. You, you can label it whatever you like. And now, I'm going to pop, pop in strong root password. Alright, we're going to go ahead and click create Linode. It's that simple. And now we're going to go ahead and we have our IPv4 address and our IPv6 address. We're going to pop over to our DNS provider, and we are going to create some records with this information. We're going to copy our IPv6. We're going to select the quadruple A. We're going to pop that in there. And I'm going to say AT, ATL for Atlanta, atl.bluebotpc.com. We'll click Save. And now we'll copy our IPv4 address, and we'll pop back over to our domain again. Uh, and we'll, our domain provider, we'll click create a new record. We'll pop that in. Oh, not there. 
ATL, so it's the same records pointing to the same place, just with a separate address. We'll hit save. So this provides better support for some networks that are using IPv6, some networks are using IPv4. As you've probably heard, IPv4, the, the, uh, the IP space is more than exhausted, and we've began using what's called carrier-grade NAT, network address translation, to continue pushing out all these IP addresses. So people are starting to share IP addresses at this point, in a way. Um, not actually. Again, it's crazy black magic technology that's actually not black magic. There's pure industry standards across the board for all that. Uh, so we created a domain record for atl.bluebotpc.com. If I come to my favorite SSH client, which is MOBA Exterm, and we go to atl.bluebotpc.com, and uh, we say that we're trying to connect over SSH, ask us how we want to log in as root. And then it's going to ask us for our root password. I'm going to copy it again. I'm going to shift insert it in. Do we want to accept? No. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to update and patch our distribution. sudo super user do apt update will update your list of available packages and and this basically says after this do this sudo super user do apt upgrade and then we're going to do a dash y flag to accept yes we want to use up the disk space for the upgrade we're going to hit enter and this is going to take about two minutes so i'll get back to you then okay we're back as we can see the updating and the patching is done so now because we're going to eventually secure our Apache web server with an SSL certificate, we need to make sure our computer's, our server's host name matches the one on the certificate. So, we need to change our host name. I've made a video about this, but we're going to, I'll walk you through it anyway. sudo super user do host name ctl. Hostname control is the service that, you, that runs on Debian operating systems to provide the host name. Set host name atl.bluebotpc.com. Now we need to set a time zone. This is just a best practice thing. sudo super user do time date ctl set time zone America Denver. You don't have to set the host of the time zone that the server is living in. You just got to set a time zone that you will be able to recognize log lines in. That one is mine. So now if we check the host name, atl.bluemontpc.com is there. And if we check our time zone, we see the universal time. We see we got mountain time going. We see it's synced up with NTP. We're good to go. So now the next thing we're going to do is we are going to install Apache and PHP um, SQLite 3 uh, for... Uh, Pothole. So anyway, sudo super user do apt install Apache 2 space php sq light 3. Do you want to use up the disk space? We sure do. We'll hit yes and let that install. And then once that has installed, we'll be able to verify it's working by going to atl.bluebotpc.com. My not specifying HTTP or HTTPS by just typing atl.bluebotpc.com, I was able to get it to come to this error message. We'll continue to cite and we'll see the default Apache um, website. So this is great. Uh, you can edit this however you like. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to install Pihole. And we'll get Pihole from their GitLab, from their OneLine installer here. We'll just copy that. And we'll paste it in with shift insert and we'll let it kind of do its thing okay okay yes we have acknowledged we need a static ip address so we're just going to go ahead and use google for our upstream dns provider uh do we wish to install the web admin interface yes but now do we want to install light ttpd now we already have apache and we don't need that so we're going to set that to off log queries yes show everything why not? Here we go. All right. So it has provided us with a login for the admin panel. So we'll hit OK. 
And just to verify that this is working, we're going to pop back over to our unsecure website and we're going to do forward space admin. We'll hit enter. Oh, that's not working right. So that's okay. So what we'll do is we need to change some groups. Uh, some grouping or some permissions are not correct. So I had to do some basic troubleshooting myself and I realized, one, we didn't need sudo to do to change the permissions, but we also need to install some other packages to get this to work. So we need to install PHP plus the PHP library for Apache. So we'll go ahead and hit yes to allow that to install. And we are also going to go ahead and reload the Apache service. sudo service Apache to re restart. Boom, okay, service Apache restart. So now if we go to the website, and we hit refresh. Hey, look at that, that's working, okay. So now if we take that password that it was given to us earlier, and we punch this in, here we are. We're in our PyHole admin interface. Now, we want to secure it, right? So we need to secure it. So first off, we want to change the password. Um, so I'm gonna do PyHole, space dash A, Space dash P, hit enter. Now it wants me to enter a new password. Uh, it's enter something a little bit more secure. Although the preset password wasn't too unsecure, but I showed it to you. It's best practice to change your passwords after you've showed somebody a password. So anyway, now we've done that. So now it's time to get a certbot certificate. Um, to do so, we first off need to do sudo apt, super easy to do apt is our uh, package manager, remove certbot. It's not installed. That is good. So now we're going to install it via snap. Snap is just another package manager built into Ubuntu. You can install it on other distributions as well. sudo snap install classic dash dash classic certbot. Here we go. It's downloading CertBot. We want to create a symbolic link to the CertBot application. This is just like creating a shortcut on your desktop. Uh, unable to resolve the host. I wonder why it's doing that. Now, I'm, I'm no Linux expert, but I believe it's because of this. It's because of the host file. So I'm just gonna, interestingly, I'm just interested. We're gonna do cat to just kind of read Etsy hosts. Mm, I see. So now if we do sudo nano Etsy hosts, we can edit this file and we are going to do a space here and then atl.bluebotpc.com. We're going to save and we're going to exit. And then for best practice, we're going to go ahead and do sudo reboot. And now we wait for our machine to reboot. Okay, so we've made it back into our uh, our virtual machine after the reboot. So now we need to continue with uh, getting a certificate from CertBot. So anyway, we are going to do sudo super user do CertBot dash dash Apache. And this should automatically configure our Apache web server to use the certificate that we paste here. So anyway, uh, enter an email address. Okay, I'm going to enter an email address. Do I agree to the terms of service? I do. Would I be willing to sh uh, share my email address with the Electronic Frontier Foundation. They're the people that run Let's Encrypt, so yes. Now, enter the domain names. atl.bluebotpc.com. That is the only certificate I want to request today. It's going to try to do its challenges over HTTPS or HTTP with our web server. It looks like it was uh, successful this is supposed to have installed itself. If we refresh, do we have an HTTPS certificate? Look at that, we sure do. 
That is awesome. So now we want to configure, finally, the recursive DNS portion of PyHole. And to do so, we're going to be using Unbound. And also to do so, we're going to be following this guide in the PyHole documentation about installing Unbound. So here it is, sudo app install Unbound. We're going to paste that in. We're going to allow it to use up the disk space. Oh, and it aborted. I must have hit something else. There we go. I must have, because that time it worked just fine. So what's this? It's saying that it failed. That's okay. We will revisit that. Because the next thing we need to do is go to, to change our directory to Etsy, Unbound, and then ls to list. Okay, there's one more folder, unbound.conf.d. We're going to change directory, period slash. The period represents the folder we're already in. Unbound.conf.d. Cool. We're going to ls in here and see that there is not a file for pihole. So we're going to touch to create a file. pi-hole.conf. Enter. So now if we ls, we see a pihole.conf folder. So now if we do nano pi-hole.conf, we can paste in some data. Now by default, this is everything it needs. So we're going to paste this in exactly as it is in the pihole documentation. Now we're also going to uncheck this so that the log can log, the log file can log to where it needs to log to. We're going to save and we're going to exit, but we're not done yet. We're going to scroll down a little bit and it says here's how we can um, restart the service and test that it's operational. So we're going to paste that in. And we, I believe, are expecting look at that. It, it did it did return some information. So now I think we need to go into our pie hole. We're gonna log in here. I'm gonna use that new password that I created. And then I'm going to go to settings, DNS, and I'm gonna use a custom server, which is local server. Yep. 5335. This points the upstream DNS to your um, unbound installation service. So now we'll go ahead and we will click save. But we need to get uh, unbound to allow logging. That is currently not working. So to do so, uh, we're just going to copy these three commands, which is going to create a directory. It's going to create the log file, and then it's going to give ownership permissions to the unbound service to the log file so that the service itself can actually log to the file. Boom. Done. Look how easy that was. I think that was pretty easy. So now if we go back here and we restart our unbound service, we can paste it in here. And now if we do um, service unbound status, we can see that the service is active and running. That is good. Remember we got all those red errors earlier? Look at that. They are taken care of. Now, how do we utilize this Pi-hole web server from our mobile device? Well, uh, we're going to pop over to my mobile phone and we're going to pop into the WireGuard application. But to continue much further, we need Pi-hole VPN installed so that we can connect our phone through a, an encrypted tunnel over the internet from our phone to the server where from that interface outward, it will go out to the internet. So we have copied the Pi, Pi VPN installer. So we're going to just paste this in. Oh, I made a mess. We're not going to, we're going to copy. We're going to try this again. Boom. Look at that. All right. We copied too many things last time, but here we go. Now we're just going to let Pi VPN install. Okay. Pi VPN needs a static IP address. Okay. But it, it already tells that we're in the cloud, so we should have an IP address. Okay. 
choose a local user that will hold the open VPN configurations. It's going to create a new user because it wants the user that holds the configuration files to not have root permissions, which is safe. So we're just going to call it VPN user. I'm going to type a new password for that user. Okay, there we go. There we go. WireGuard. We're going to select it. The default port is 51820. Good for us. That is correct. We've detected a Pi-hole installation. Do you want to use it as the DNS server for your on-the-go devices? We sure do. Boom. And then we're going to connect using a DNS entry. What is that DNS entry? atl.bluebotpc.com. Is that our public DNS name? One more time. Yes, it is. All right. Now it's going to generate the server's private keys. All right. And now it wants to apply security patches automatically. We are going to allow that. That is awesome. And now uh, it, would, it would like us to reboot. And you know what? If it tells me I need to reboot, I'm going to reboot. No questions asked. So we'll be back after this reboot. Okay, so we're back from our restart, and this is where it gets a little funky junky, and I'm glad to be using my favorite MOBA, Xterm. We are going to create our Pi hole, or our Pi VPN users, sorry. Pi VPN, space dash A to add, space dash N for the name, and I'm going to call it my phone. Boom. Generation is done. Pi VPN dash QR. We'll hit one to list the one for my phone. Perfect. So now I'm going to pop into my phone. I am going to turn on my screen recorder. And I'm going to open WireGuard. I'm going to start recording. I'm going to add a new tunnel. Scan from a QR code. And there we go. Atlanta. Create a tunnel. And now I'm going to turn that tunnel on. Now my phone is connected to this endpoint in Atlanta. So now if I pop over to um, speed te the speed test app, I will see that my provider is Linode. We're going to hit go. And we're going to run a quick speed test. If we go to whatismyip.com, we'll see that our public IP address is the same as our DNS record, 194.195.214.207. That's awesome, isn't it? So that means all of our traffic from this phone is going out to Atlanta before going out to the rest of the internet. Okay, so I promised you that we would secure our web server with UFW. So we're going to do that. So we're going to do sudo uh, UFW for universal firewall. We're going to default deny incoming. And then we're going to sudo UFW. So that'll block all incoming traffic. We're going to do sudo UFW default allow outgoing. So we're going to allow all outgoing traffic by default. So now here we go. sudo UFW allow SSH. This way we can maintain access over SSH once we've um, enabled the firewall. And then we're going to do sudo uh, UFW allow HTTP sudo UFW allow HTTPS, and then we're going to do sudo allow, sudo, sorry, UFW allow port 53 over TCP, and then we're also going to up arrow and allow it over UDP. Uh, DNS traffic is on port 53, and it could go either TCP or UDP protocol. And then uh, the final fun one to make sure WireGuard works is uh, first off if we do IP ADDR, whoops, we can see our IP interfaces. So this is important because we need to know the IP subnet 
for this WG0. So anyway, we see that now, okay? So now, if we do sudo ufw route, because we're going to create a route, and we're going to allow in on WG0, so we're going to allow incoming traffic on WireGuard0 out on Ethernet 0. We're going to redirect that traffic out a different interface from 10.6.0.0 forward slash 24. That final dot zero right there is the network name. This dot one here indicates the gateway. And this slash 24 is how many borrowed bits there are for the client's IP addresses. And if we hit enter, now we can do sudo ufw status verbose to list, uh, I guess we need to enable it, sudo ufw enable, yes we want to proceed, and now we can ask it verbose to ask for a list of all of our um, IP rules, and there they are, and I have confirmed they are working on my phone. So there we go, you now know how to secure your Pi-hole Pi VPN Linode running in the cloud using a universal firewall. Okay, so now I've shown you how to create a Linode, how to install Pi-hole with Apache, secure it with CertBot, and install Pi VPN and connect your phone to the Pi VPN. And I've shown you that the VPN tunnel is the same IP address as our Pi-hole. Uh, DNS server, which also has unbound for recursive DNS, so we're not sharing our DNS requests with the rest of the internet. We're resolving them locally, so that is awesome. So in the next video, we'll be showing you how to um, manage and maintain your Pinehole service. Thanks for watching.